Hey everybody, my name is Taylor Glenn and this is my channel Taylor Tries, where I try new things and I try to teach you new things. And today I'm going to cover some basic juggling terminology that will help you navigate this huge exciting world that is juggling. Knowing the right terms can be really valuable when you're just getting into a new hobby like juggling so that you know what things to search for, you know what questions to ask, so that is the point of this video. I see a lot of jugglers try to shame beginners for not having the correct terms, and I really don't like that. So I'm not trying to teach these to you so that you can go do that to someone else. If you know a beginner who is saying some incorrect terminology, just send them this video, be nice, be patient, and I hope this video helps. So let's start with the basics. Juggling is a form of object manipulation. Object manipulation is a pretty self-explanatory term. It's a general term given to a lot of different hobbies where you're manipulating objects. Juggling is a type of object manipulation. When most people say juggling, what they're actually usually referring to is toss juggling. Toss juggling is what it sounds like. It is tossing. Juggling. Now most jugglers will assume you are talking about toss juggling even when you just say juggling. But just so you know, toss juggling is a term that is thrown around, especially when it is used in comparison to things like contact juggling, which is another great term. Contact juggling is a form of juggling where the object stays in contact with your body the entire time. It's most typically done with a ball or multiple balls. There's also another form of it called club contact, where you do it with clubs. Contact juggling is not a form of toss juggling, but it's still considered a form of juggling and object manipulation. These are props. Jugglers will refer to the equipment that they use as a prop. Let's look at each one individually. These are juggling balls, the most basic juggling prop. Now within juggling balls, there are a bunch of different styles and brands and all that stuff. Now this is a bean bag. This is what we call a Russian style ball. I'll cover those in a different video, but I do want to point out that some jugglers do not consider a beanbag a ball, and they will consider something like this a ball, because a beanbag doesn't quite have that perfect ball-like shape. It's really splitting hairs, but you might come across some jugglers that insist a beanbag is not a ball. Either way, these are juggling balls. This is a juggling ring. Yep, that's what they're called. This is a juggling club. A lot of people mistakenly call these pins because they look like bowling pins, but in the juggling world, they're most typically called clubs. If you call them pins, some people will probably make fun of you or consider you a noob. I'm not a fan of making fun of beginners for that. I think it's really mean and unfair. Just so you know, if you do call them pins, there are jugglers out there who are gonna be mean to you. So it's best just to avoid that harassment and call them clubs. So when you're doing some sort of juggling move, those are called patterns. Some people will also call them tricks. So these are called juggling patterns or juggling tricks, depending on your preference. I should note, some jugglers really don't like the term tricks. They think it's somehow a degrading term and it makes it sound like you're fooling somebody. So a lot of people will prefer the term pattern instead of trick. I use them pretty interchangeably. I don't think it really matters. Just be aware, patterns and tricks whatever. The most basic juggling pattern is called the cascade. When people juggle three balls, they are juggling the three ball cascade. Now a cascade is a continuous pattern where the ball is crossing and landing in the other hand. A cascade can only be done with an odd number of objects. So three, five, seven, nine, etc. You can't do a four ball cascade. It's not possible. Related to that, a lot of people will refer to a crossing throw to the other hand as a cascade throw because it's part of that cascade pattern. So what is an even pattern called? Great question. An even pattern is what we call a fountain. A fountain is a pattern where the balls are continuously thrown up to the same hand. In a fountain pattern, the balls are not crossing. So for example, with four, I'm doing two in each hand. This is a four ball fountain. So again, you cannot do a four ball cascade, nor can you do a three ball fountain. It's just not possible. Now that isn't to say that you can't do patterns with four balls where the balls are crossing. That is true, but technically the only way to juggle an even number of objects without some weird timing going on is in the fountain pattern. Similarly, the only way to do that with an odd number of objects is in a cascade pattern. And like I said, some people will refer to a crossing throw as a cascade throw. Similarly, people will refer to a straight up throw to the same hand as a fountain throw. So you might see those terms sometimes used in certain patterns. So we have cascades and fountains. Those are two of the main base patterns of juggling. The third one that you'll see really often is what we call a shower. A shower is when the pattern is going in a circle. It's what a lot of people think of when they think of juggling before they learn how to do it the easier way. 
A shower can be done with an even or an odd number of objects, it doesn't matter. So you can do a three ball shower, four ball shower, seven ball shower, but also keep in mind the shower patterns are usually a lot harder than the cascade or the fountain patterns. Sometimes you'll also hear the term reverse in front of a pattern name. And that basically just means you're doing the inverse type throw of it. So if you're doing a cascade where the throws are going inside to outside, a reverse cascade is where the throws go outside to inside. So cascade, reverse cascade, fountain, reverse fountain. This doesn't really work for every trick, but you will see that term reverse a lot. And that's what it means. It's just the opposite. Another term you might hear when learning patterns is a column throw. Columns or a column throw is when you're actually throwing the ball straight up. It seems a little similar to a fountain, but it's not the same. A fountain throw actually does make a slight curve. For example, like this, the balls are going in a circle. With a column throw, the ball is going straight up as though it is in a column. Columns can be done with any number of objects. They can cross hands or they can go up to the same hand. So this would be column throws with three balls. You can do column throws with four balls. Basically a column throw just means you're throwing straight up in the same line. Another pattern term that people use is Mills Mess or simply Mess. Now Mills Mess is a three ball trick, it looks like this. I have a tutorial on it, but people will also use that term Mills Mess or Mess and apply it to a lot of other tricks because it essentially just means crossing and uncrossing your arms. So you can do a handful of other moves in the style of Mills Mess. So let's take a trick called 531. I'll get into the numbers in a second. 531 looks like this. It's great, but some people will say do 531 mess. And that basically means to do that pattern, but do it in that crossing and uncrossing style. 531 or 531 mess. So if you hear somebody say mess or Mills Mess at the end of another pattern, that's what they mean, that crossing and uncrossing type motion. Jugglers will often use the terms sync and async when teaching tricks or doing tricks. Those are pretty self-explanatory. They stand for synchronous and asynchronous, basically the same time or not at the same time. So when somebody says synchronous, they mean throwing two or more objects at the same time. When they say async, it means not at the same time. One of the first terms you might learn as a beginner is flash. In juggling, flash actually has two meanings. The first use of the word flash is when you throw all of the objects in a pattern once and catch them all. So with a three ball cascade, it would be three throws and three catches. One, two, three. That is a three ball flash. If you're learning a four ball fountain, it would be four catches. One, two, three, four. That's a four ball flash. Now it gets a little confusing with patterns that involve different throws and aren't just repetitive because sometimes in that case, a flash is considered when you have done each throw in the pattern once. It does not necessarily the objects. So for example, in Mills Mess, there are six throws before the pattern repeats. So in order to do a flash of Mills Mess, most people will consider it six catches. One, two, three, four, five, six. So typically a flash is when you throw every object or every throw in a pattern once, depending on what you're doing. But if you're just starting out, a good rule of thumb is that a flash is however many objects you have, it's that many catches. So three objects, one, two, three. That's a flash. Filmed that whole thing and forgot to tell you the second meaning of the word flash. That's why this looks totally different because the sun has changed. The second meaning of the term flash is pretty basic. It's basically a trick where you're throwing all the objects up and there's a beat where your hands are completely empty. The reason why it's called a flash is because a lot of time you can do something kind of flashy underneath it, like spin around or clap your hands. One, two, three, flash or flash. A term very similar to a flash that jugglers will use quite often is a qualify. Now qualify is basically twice as many as a flash. So if a flash was three catches, then a qualify is six catches. So one, two, three, four, five, six. That was a qualify of the three ball cascade. A lot of jugglers will consider a qualify the point where you have officially done the trick. And that same rule that applied with the flash applies with the qualify. So with a pattern like Mills Mess, where it only completes after six catches, a qualify of Mills Mess is usually considered 12 catches for that reason. It's twice as many as the flash. But again, if you're just starting out, the best way to think about flashes and qualifies is that a flash is as many catches as objects and a qualify is twice as many catches as objects. Flash, qualify. Four ball flash. Four ball qualify. 
At some point, you'll hear jugglers throw around a bunch of numbers, and they'll all seem to understand what they're talking about except you. They are talking about sight swap. Sight swap is a juggling notation that jugglers use to describe the timings and heights of juggling patterns. It can be really intimidating at first, but it's not as hard as you think it is. I made a whole tutorial breaking it down and explaining it. You should go check that out if you want to understand more about it. So if you see a bunch of numbers, that's sight swap. You might also see numbers combined with letters or asterisks or parentheses. That is all sight swap. Question I get all the time is how do I juggle with somebody else? This is called passing in juggling. Passing is when you are standing across from another person or even in front of sometimes, and you are throwing the objects back and forth. That is passing. So if you're at a juggling convention and somebody says, hey, do you want to pass? That's what they mean. There's also a style of juggling with another person where you're side by side. That doesn't really have a universal term that I know of. Sometimes people will call it simply partner juggling or buddy juggling. There's also a fairly new style of passing called Shiva passing, where the jugglers are in front and back of each other and they're doing patterns like that. There's a video of it, I can't really describe it. But for the most part, when somebody says passing, they're talking about the front to front style. You should also note that passing can be done with any object. It's most commonly done with clubs, but it can be done with balls, can be done with rings, it can be done with poi, etc. Another term you might hear when juggling with other people is stealing or a steal. Stealing is basically when you're juggling a pattern and another juggler will come in and take that pattern either from the front or the back or the side. It's not the same as typical passing or that side-by-side -side buddy passing because you're not throwing to the other juggler. In stealing, you're basically doing a solo pattern, a one-person pattern, and you are stealing that pattern from each other. A term you'll hear pretty often in juggling is numbers juggling. Now, this is not sight swap. A lot of people think that numbers juggling is referring to those sight swap numbers. It's not. Numbers juggling is a focus of juggling where you are trying to juggle as many objects as possible. So instead of trying to learn tricks and creative variations, you're primarily focused on getting as many objects as possible, as high of a number of juggling props as possible. So sometimes you'll hear jugglers say, I like numbers juggling, or I'm entering the numbers competition or I'm simply a numbers juggler. That's juggling that is just focused on getting the highest number of objects possible. You might sometimes hear jugglers talk about sport juggling or competitive juggling. Sport juggling is a style of juggling where you're really focused on getting the hardest tricks possible with the best possible form. Meaning you're not really concerned with like movement or creativity with the trick. You're just trying to do a pattern as purely and as technically and efficiently as possible. So it's basically trying to treat juggling like a sport, like this very physical, purely technical thing. Numbers juggling can be considered a type of sport juggling, but not all sport juggling is numbers juggling, if that makes sense. So sport jugglers often will do variations and interesting tricks, but their goal is to do them as purely and technically as possible. Sight swap is really popular among sport jugglers, and part of where that term sport and competitive juggling comes from is that people will do juggling competitions based on that. Sport juggling can be easier to judge and compete against other people with because it doesn't have a lot of that leeway that other styles of juggling do. It emphasizes technique, form, exercise, and competition. Another style of juggling you might hear is joggling. Yes, you heard that right, joggling. A lot of people think this is a typo, but it's actually its own style of juggling. Joggling is when you combine jogging plus juggling. Basically, you are running while juggling. There are whole competitions about this. There are world records, all sorts of fun stuff. Joggling can be a great exercise and way to compete against other jugglers, and it can be really fun. So if you like running and you like juggling, give joggling a try. If you ever see people throwing juggling balls on the ground and they bounce back up, that is called bounce juggling. If you wanna learn bounce juggling, now you know the term. Seems pretty obvious, but bounce juggling is the official term for that. Last term I want to teach you today is a back cross. A lot of jugglers, when they first start out, they wanna learn behind the back and they'll call it behind the back when they're searching for it or asking other jugglers. The official juggling term for a behind the back throw is a back cross. Sometimes online you'll see this written as a B and an X, back cross. So if you wanna learn that move, try searching for back cross instead of behind the back. And it'll also just make other people think you know what you're doing. One more, actually. So a back cross is a type of body throw. A body throw is what it sounds like. Anytime you're throwing a ball around your body, it's called a body throw. So if you ever go to a festival and you see a body throw workshop, that's what they're covering is things like back crosses or even that way. 
just around the body, under the leg, body throws. Okay, there are so many more terms that I can introduce you to, but this is pretty good for this first video. If you found this terminology video helpful and you wanna see more helpful juggling terms, let me know, leave a comment, and I'll try to make more, because there's so many, so many things. Or if there is a specific term that you've come across that took you a while to figure out or you still don't know, again, leave them in the comments. Let me know what those are and I'll make another video soon. And if you've never been here on my channel before, go, go check it out and look at all my videos. I have lots of tutorials and I'm making more all the time. I really wanna see you all succeed in juggling and have a great time with it. So thank you for stopping by. I hope these terms helped you and I'll see you next time. So if there's synchronous throws, that means you're throwing two,